consistency. A concept purely based in Oracle into the Times 10 database as well. So transactionally, it works a lot like the Oracle database. And in fact, we've taken features from Times 10 and have moved them into the Oracle database. So 11G, we have things like a server result cache, which is partially an in-memory database inside the database. We have a client-side result cache, helps us get that blue line effect in a client application. I talked about the in-memory parallel execution. That's a concept very much borrowed from the Times 10 database. So there's a blurring of the two, but when you're thinking about times 10, think the blue line versus the red line. Here's a little talking about large objects versus raw and varicate. When should I use which, which type? This is pretty easy. If you have binary information, you're going to use raw or block. If your binary information is always going to be 2,000 bytes or less, you would use raw. If it's going to be bigger, you would use block. And that's basically all it comes down to. Even if you're in a transactional application, and this is probably where this question is coming from, uh, you would only use the large object types if your data doesn't fit in the smaller data types. So if you have a field that needs to be larger than 4,000 characters, please don't use two columns to store it or something like that. You know, don't use two Veracare 4,000 columns. Just use a claw. That will allow us to actually move the data, the couple of thousand characters, out of your table and into another segment. When you need to retrieve it, we can put it all back together. It's not in the database table itself. So the table itself is faster to scan through. The rows are more compact. You get more rows per block. You get better overall performance from the OFVP application. But the bottom line for this one is, if it fits in a Veracare, use a Veracare. If it doesn't, don't try to get fancy and, and create three columns or four columns and then concatenate them all back together. I've seen that happen quite frequently. You know, I need to be able to store at least 16K of data. So I'm going to use five Veracare of 4,000 columns to do it. And then you see dozens of lines of code to put the data back together and break the data apart. That would be the wrong approach. Just use the cloud data type. And I think that was it. That was all of them. And we are now at the last two. This had to do with certification first one, uh, the OCM, Portable Certified Master. These certifications are valued highly, not only in, in Japan, but pretty much every place that I've gone, in the United States, Europe, and so on. How high is the OCM evaluated in the USA? And do I personally have any qualifications? I think I have certain qualifications but I have no Oracle certifications personally. What the OCP and the OCM are good for, in my opinion, is showing you've kept up with the technology. It shows that you have stayed current with the current releases. If you're in a place working and you have your certification on version 9i and they're using 11G, they might look at that and say, have you really been keeping up? Have you studied the new features? Do you, do you know what's going on in the new software? Do you know how to take advantage of it? For me, I've never felt the need to get certified because it is my job. My entire job description is stay current on the database features. Right? So I get the training first and then give the training 
for the new features. So for me, working inside of Oracle, being certified would not be an advantage. If I left Oracle and became an independent consultant, probably one of the first things I would do is get the certification to say, I'm, I'm certified at 11.2. If you're using any release of Oracle less than that, I know about it. And when version 12 comes out, as an independent consultant, I would probably refresh that certification and become certified in version 12. So that when I present myself, I can say, I have at least had the training. I know this stuff. I know the features exist. I might not have used them in production yet, but I'm aware they're there and I know how to utilize the capabilities. If I was going on an interview for a permanent job, not as a consultant, the certification could be useful if somebody was looking at two people and one of them had the certification and one of them did not. So from there, it's useful. So it depends on who you are and if you're in a job that you're going to be in for the next 20 years, then maybe you don't need the certification. But if you're going to move around from place to place, or you'd like to advance up, the certification can be useful. And it is quite rigorous. I mean, I've worked on the tests themselves. They're, they're not easy, uh, especially the Oracle Certified Master stuff. It's a rather intensive course. So getting it uh, does prove you actually know your stuff. And in the US, it's as valued as highly as it is here, apparently. Europe, they value it extremely high as well, especially for independent consultants. You know, if, if you have five independent consultants to choose from, and two of them are certified, you're probably going to ignore three of them because you don't, unless you know them personally, you really don't know how much they know. At least these other two, you know they know at least this much information. They might not have used it yet, but they have been educated on it. The other one was, how are we able to be an excellent Oracle database engineer, database architect? The way I've approached this is to participate in forums, in user groups, in conferences, coming to events like this. I learn something new about Oracle almost every day. And I've been working with Oracle for 23 years now. Uh, there's always something new to learn. And the way I learn is by reading other people's questions and sometimes their answers. So end users who come to Ask Tom teach me things that I didn't know before. And then when somebody else comes and asks that question, I teach them that thing. By participating in these forums in the, in the discussion groups, you're going to see answers to questions that are different from the answers you would get because there's hundreds of ways to do things in the database. There's no single right way to do anything. It depends on the context, going back to best practices. And by participating in discussion forums, user groups, conferences like this, you get exposed to lots of different ideas. If you just go to the same job for five years in a row, and you work with the same people for five years in a row, and you work on the same version of the database for five years in a row, at the end of five years, you're not going to know much more than you did five years ago. But if you participate in these groups, you're going to be exposed to lots of other things. And I think that's the best way to get truly a, a well-rounded sort of experience. Take on different tasks. Get out of your comfort zone. If you've been a DBA, a production DBA, for the last 10 years, maybe volunteer to become a development DBA for a year. It's a very different environment. You're going to learn new skills. It might really annoy you for a while, uh, but you'll see the other side of, of certain problems. If